Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Ashanka Show, the place where you can always learn something new about life in the USSR. And today I tell you what I remember about watching American movie Na следующий день, the day after when it was shown on the Soviet television back in 1987. The question about that movie comes up periodically like this comment, I'm curious how the prospect of nuclear war was viewed, discussed in the USSR and if you saw any Eastern or Western Doomsday movies like The Day After. Just in case if you're not familiar, The Day After is an American television film that was uh, aired on November 20th, 1983 on the ABC television net. And I'm not sure how common it is to make a movie and show it right away on TV instead of first showing it in the movie theaters and then uh, showing it on TV, but that was The Day After situation. It was televised right away. Spoiler alert, uh, so if you planning to watch this movie, you might want to pause this video and go watch it, but this uh, film postulates a fictional war between NATO forces and a Warsaw Pact over Germany that rapidly escalates in full-scale nuclear exchange between the United States and the Soviet Union. So as I mentioned, this movie was aired on November 20th, 1983, United States, so that's still Cold War, a pretty tense situation. But in Soviet Union, it was shown in 1987, so that's pretty much perestroika time, and that's where we could kind of relax a little bit about dangers of nuclear exchange. I'm not a movie nerd, but I believe that was the second time ever when American movie was shown on Soviet television. First time it happened back in 1979, we had a movie, They Shoot Horses, Don't They?, shown on the first channel, central channel of the Soviet Union. They showed that movie twice, in 1979 and again in 1982, but I was way too young to remember, but I remember really well the movie Na Sietu the day after. In 1987, my family already owned a color TV called Electron. It was a big deal. My family finally decided to splurge on that in a year prior, 1986. The cost was 650 rubles, and my parents were making about 320 rubles a month combined income, so pretty expensive, so they bought it on the payment plan, but we did have a color TV. And I need to remind you guys that we did see American movies in the movie theaters, not often, but I watched The Convoy, I remember McKenna Gold, and the worst movie ever, The Verdict. Man, I was about to kill myself during that show. But showing an American movie on TV was a rare occurrence, so that was a big deal for a lot of Soviet people. I actually do remember that evening when we gathered in front of our TV in the living room. My little brother was asleep and I always remember my mom, the only time she wore her big large glasses and when she was watching TV, so she has those dorkiest glasses on, we're all waiting. But what was interesting, before the movie was shown, they had uh, some uh, movie expert, Soviet movie expert, was explaining for a while the way American movies are made. Yes, I'm that serious. We were explained how American movies quite often consist of the kind of like parallel life stories that don't seem related to each other, but at some point they're going to converge. And as was kind of warning that you will be a little bit confused because they're going to show different families, totally unrelated, and this is how American movies quite often made. And 1987 was almost 40 years ago. So I don't remember a lot about that movie. There's some episode that stuck in my mind. What I remember is the view of the nuclear missiles uh, leaving their silos. And that was kind of this ominous, scary moment when they know this is the end of the world and something horrible is coming. Of course, nuclear explosions. And then I just remember there was that bizarre scene. It was just some hard-faced, wild-looking people just shooting other people in order to get food, so it's like everything goes downhill, you know, so that was really bizarre part because we never like talked about it in the Soviet Union, like aftermath of the nuclear exchange. If you remember, I made already a video about our military training in the Soviet schools called NVP, Nachalna Vajana Podgatovka, Initial Military Training, and we talked about nuclear explosions and how to react when you walk, and it says, Spishka Sprava, so flash to your right, so you need to jump to your left, close your eyes and crash on the ground. But they never talked in details. We never talked about, you know, keeping some stashes of food or building some kind of bunkers, like, you know, that movie Blast from the Past that was hilarious. I just rewatched it another day. So we never talked about aftermath of nuclear exchange. It was just like we have this 
real possibility that will be nuclear exchange but not what would be going on after so the general understanding at least in my mind was when we have nuclear exchange like we done sun lights are out the world is over and i never thought it would be some survivors there would be people killing each other in order to obtain food and water so all that uh, post-apocalypse uh, situations were never looked at in the soviet union so this movie was kind of an eye-opener of course you see it from the American perspective. Another interesting detail I remember about this movie, but that was in the commentary, and I'm not sure, was it in the newspapers after the movie was shown, or maybe that movie critic before the movie was mentioning. But it was said that this movie, the day after, in 1983, made Ronald Reagan and his administration quite upset, because, you know, they were kind of like, yeah, yeah, we're tough guys, we can do the nuclear exchange, you know, America is number one, and suddenly they show what America would look like after nuclear exchange, and at least it was said in the Soviet newspapers that Reagan was really not happy about this movie being uh, televised. And if you have any information about Ronald Reagan reaction to the day after movie, I would love to uh, read about it in your comments. And also I want to remind you guys that we never had any training in schools that duck duck cover style uh, training. So it was nothing like that that also raises your awareness about nuclear exchange. We talked about it in uh, like high school level when we had our military training. But before that, uh, kids never bothered with any type of training what to do in case of the nuclear explosion. But in the early 80s, right at the peak of the Cold War when the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan and the United States imposed embargoes, I remember there was a lot of worry about possibly war between United States and Soviet Union. Of course, war, we talk about nuclear exchange. And I uh, mentioned this story several times. So when I was a little kid back then, uh, we had a children's movie. I don't remember the name, but the movie was about this match box which had magic matches three magic matches and every time you break the match you can make a wish so i was imagining what would i do if i find this uh, magic matches and my thoughts were first match would be for the world peace so as a little kid you know 1980 I was like nine i already was carried worried about peace in the world so first wish was uh, so there'd be no war peace in the world, and then that I live forever, and then my parents live forever. That was three of my wishes for that uh, those three uh, magic matches. But of course, by 1987, with Perestroika and improving relations between the United States and Soviet Union, uh, worries about nuclear exchange were diminished, and at that time I was almost 16, so I could tell you, and I'm embarrassed to admit it, I would rather watch two times uh, the Conway movie versus to watch another day the day after i just more into entertainment uh, in hollywood movies not the apocalypse style movies it's kind of interesting i also stumbled upon uh, boris yeltsin mentioned in this movie uh, he said shortly after the soviet union collapsed i assume that recalling the famous american movie the day after today we can say that the day after will be peaceful that day will have less fear and more hope for the happiness of our children. The world can exhale peacefully. The communist idol, which was horrifying the humankind, had collapsed. It had collapsed forever. And I'm here to tell you, it will never rise again. Okay, my friends, that's all I remember about the movie the day after. I hope I answer your question. I hope you find this video interesting. And if you did, please don't forget to like and share with your friends. We'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye.